100,000 bid, 110,000. 110,000. Sold one hundred thousand dollars to the to the state of New Hampshire. That was the price of some New Hampshire history, a record price paid by the state for a lovely 18th century high boy which once belonged to Josiah Bartlett. By the close of the auction, state officials had spent more than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Thirty-seven five bid, forty thousand. The only one in the world. Thirty-seven five bid, forty thousand anywhere. Forty thousand. We sold it. Thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Forty-eight. Number forty. The New Hampshire Historical Society pitched in also to stave off the loss of furnishings and paper to out-of-state buyers. Society officials spent seven thousand dollars for britches Josiah wore horseback to Philadelphia. Society director John Frisbee told reporters, every, "Every time things go out of state, it makes me concerned. I think uh, I think we all." all share a common feeling that we would like to keep things like this and things like uh, those items sold at the bachelor sale in, in, in the state and where we can get them in public hands. Who was Josiah Bartlett? That, when his descendants decided to sell his papers, his tables and more. Even the vest he wore when signing the Declaration of Independence, the state silently set aside money to keep as much as possible of that special history out of the hands of private collectors and dealers from elsewhere. State archivist Frank Meavers explains. I think Josiah Butler was an extraordinary man who gave of himself uh, greatly for the state of New Hampshire. He served us in almost every capacity in public office there was during the American Revolution and during the years afterwards. Last president, first governor of the state under the current constitution uh, under which we live. He was the president pro tem of the ratification convention for the U.S. Constitution in 19, uh, 1788. Bartlett's most direct New Hampshire descendant, Ruth Reddy, who lives in Bartlett's Kingston home and a New York aunt, felt financially pushed to go forward with the auction. Now imagine growing up in the midst of all this history. There's a wonderful, musty aroma about the place, this room. It makes you want to touch all the items and read every letter and paper. And then imagine having to see it all leave for most of us, this is state and national history. But for Ruth Reddy, it's personal, family history. Now I asked her, what did she think that her great, 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 great grandfather was really like? Well, when you read the letters, it's almost like you're right there listening to them talk, you know, and just asking about the children, being concerned with them, a real caring, caring father. In May, the legislature, led by Senate President Bill Bartlett, also of Kingston but not a direct descendant, quietly appropriated $1 million to bid on Josiah's possessions and buy and restore other historic items. Some lawmakers argued it was done too quietly. The problem that arises in my mind is why it wasn't brought before the legislature. I think that uh, the people of New Hampshire, being conservative, respecting history and respecting the state would have been more than willing to consider it and probably vote in the affirmative if it had been brought before us, rather than being hid hidden, uh, as I feel, uh, in this special section of the budget. But you can't expect the Bartlett family to retain history all their lives for the rest of us. And I think that they're justified in doing what they're doing. And if the New Hampshire wants to retain its history, I think it's important that they put their money up and retain the history for the generations to come. Even Governor Judd Gregg got involved, asking a noted appraiser and auctioneer, Ron Bourgeau, to help the state out in its bidding. It's almost like a field of dreams. It, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the, the items here today, as an appraiser, it's very difficult to appraise them at the prices that they're bringing. But, but you know, there's magic. It was like magic at the Bartlett home. Auctioneer Martin Willis chose the site here intentionally for his auction. One of the things uh, when I first came here, uh, they were considering Sotheby's in New York. And that would have meant that everything would have gone down to New York. And when I took a walk through the house and looked at everything, I convinced them that they would probably get the most money for their items coming right straight out of the house where they've been for 200 years. This is apple cider, and if I'd been here 200 years ago, I'd be sipping it with Josiah Bartlett and George Washington, who came up here in 1789 to visit him. 
There's so much history associated with this property, this house, and this tree. Josiah Bartlett brought this tree back from Philadelphia as a sapling, just after he'd signed the Declaration of Independence. And speaking of declarations, proclamations, and the like, those Bartlett papers also sold well. 275, 300, 3 and a quarter, 3 and a half, 3 and a half, 375. 375 man, the Historical Society had to spend $55,000 to get the papers it wanted. Josiah's school book. 567, 7, 607, 800, 809, 9, 800 is bid 9, 900, 1,000, 1,000, 5, 900 standing, 1,000, sir, 1,000, 1,100, 1,100, 1,200, 13. Notification to Bartlett of the surrender of the British, sold for around $3,000. And as for the prices generally... I think they're all extraordinarily high, um, but I think one has to anticipate that with the kind of hype that this has had. Uh, you know, I think it's great for the family, but let's face it, I mean, it's a circus. A Josiah Bartlett infant's playpen sold for $3,400. Well, our little Bartlett thoughts were right on this one here through the generations. <laughs> and considering there were so many children, that's in very good condition. What's also interesting is the state has $850,000 left to spend on other auctions and history for sale in New Hampshire. Sold it, 195, number 288.